This beautiful Haworthia clump is Haworthia cooperi variation pellifera. Join me while we talk about how to care for this beautiful plant. Liquid Amber Girl Gardening. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, then you probably realize that I have a super soft spot in my heart for all things Haworthia. This one is definitely one of those that I'm in love with. It just is such a pretty Haworthia. So many Haworthias just have small windows at the top of their leaves, just little small areas where they do their um, photosynthesizing. You can just see the light kind of reflecting through them. But in this variation, the polyphora, almost the entire tip of some of these leaves is clear. Um, instead of just a few little, real small, not noticeable windows, I mean, look at those. Aren't they beautiful? Another characteristic of this um, polyphora, excuse me, is the um, <clears throat> the way the little hairs kind of finish off on the tip of each leaf, just like one long thread that comes up and out from the end of each leaf. Love it. That does have like kind of a little bit of teeth along the edge, nothing that is hard or scratchy even. I can barely even feel it as I run my thumb and finger along them. But just so, so beautiful. As you can see, this plant clumps really, really easily. It just takes a little bit of time. And these ones have grown out a lot. Um, I don't think they're stretched to the point of being etiolated. It's just um, in nature, if you saw this plant, all you would see is just the very top. The windows, which is why Haworthias have their windows at the top of their leaves. When it's hot and the sun is really, really brutal in South Africa, which is where this plant is from, the plant basically shrinks down into the soil sand. Actually, it's mostly rocks that they live in so that only the very tips of the leaves are available. Um, for one, it protects them from animals coming through to eat them. Uh, as a source of water, um, but even more, it protects the plant from being burnt by really harsh, intense sunlight. So that tells us <clears throat> that this plant does not like to have lots of bright and intense sun. Usually, if you would see this in nature, besides just being able to only see just the very tips of the leaves, it would just be a real tight clump like this, just that little bit peeking out. And usually there's scrub grass growing around it. If you see pictures of them in nature that actually shade the plant as well. So we don't want to have bright, harsh sunlight shining on them. This is a west facing window where these plants are right now, but you can see that I have curtains and that just basically keeps the sun from being too intense. So we did talk about light, although I didn't talk about grow lights. If you're someone who has grow lights, you can keep your Haworthias under them. Just be prepared for them to discolor. Um, and that's pretty normal. Haworthias will change their color a lot of times taking on like a kind of brownish tinge if they have a lot of light, a lot more intense light. Um, if you like them to have that color, then maybe you would like to keep them in a brighter situation as far as sunlight or underneath a grow light. If you like them, if you're okay with the kind of bright green color like this has, then um, not so much direct light. Uh, let's talk about watering. So if you're keeping this, especially this type of Horthia, but all Horthias that I've ever kept, they really, um, they don't want wet roots. So seriously consider keeping a large amount of um, pumice. This is crushed pumice. In your mix so even I use 100% pumice as you can see I have some this is salt um, from fertilizer I do because I don't have any soil in the mix for these Haworthias I have to use fertilizer um, just to make sure they're getting nutrients because if there's no organics in your mix then you have to replace it with something they have to have some nutrients to take up during their growing time. 
Um, this would be dangerous for the leaves to touch. So be aware that if you ever get salt buildup, it's very easy to remove this from your pots. It can be scrubbed or soaked off. Um, I do have a video about how to clean your terracotta pot, so you can check that out if you are interested in how to do that. Um, anyway, okay, so watering schedule is easy. I water all of these plants one time a week, but I don't water a whole lot. So, um, and again, what you have them planted in is also a contributing factor to how much water that you can give them. Because my Haworthias here are in 100% pumice, they'll be a lot more forgiving if I give them a little bit more water. If there was a lot of organics mixed into this or if it was 100% some kind of a soil mix, um, they wouldn't be nearly as forgiving. You would start to see rot um, and it would happen very, very quickly and take your plants um, completely, unfortunately. So be very careful. Um, I can give these quite, quite a good amount of water and I always try to water right around the plants, never on top of the plants. And that also helps to keep um, the rot at bay. It keeps it from um, working its way into the plants. If they can't get that water off of them, dried off of them quickly enough, then rot will almost certainly set in. Haworthias, especially um, this Cooperi, is they're never going to be a huge plant. Now they can clump into just a magnificent bunch of plants like this, but these are all individual little plants. It's not one huge plant. Um, generally in nature, especially, they stay quite small and in cultivation, they can get bigger. Oh, I have broken off a tip at some point. And what I can do with this is set it right down into my mix here. And there we go. And that will grow. So that will grow roots eventually. And I wouldn't do that except it's already, can we focus, there we go. It's already dried. If that was moist on that tip, if it had just been broken, then I wouldn't um, allow it to be watered for a couple weeks, but it's clearly dried out enough that it'll be safe. I'll just set it in there and he will grow roots and be a new plant. I know exactly when I did it too, I was reaching over this to a basket I have full of yoga magazines. <laughs> Whoops. That was me. I can't blame the kids or the hubby on that one. So you can expect your Haworthias to probably grow to about somewhere between four inches across, um, four to six inches tall. This is a six inch, six inches across terracotta pot. So, um, and that had uh, three plants originally that went into it, but now we have just so many plantlets. I don't know how many are in there, um, a good amount. And it filled it out really nicely, I think. I love this arrangement. As far as temperatures, these Haworthias are just like most, if not all of your other succulents that you own. Um, if it's not something that you can live in comfortably without the use of coats or mittens, then it's okay for these. So they like to be in that same range that you keep the temperature in your house at. Um, so crazy as I'm filming this, we have that's right, we have snow coming down. So miserable. Um, I'm about to go out and get to work in the grapes out in the vineyard where I um, work. And that's just like, I can't believe that we have this snow. And then on Friday, they're calling for 77 degrees. <laughs> that's Ohio weather for you. Um, if we want to talk about um, poisonous Haworthias are not considered to be a poisonous plant. Um, animals in South Africa actually search for these and eat them as a form of water. So they can't be all that bad, can they? But do you want your animals chewing or small children chewing on these? No. Um, first of all, just the roughage, because they're not soft exactly, um, would, could be bad like for their gastrointestinal, all that kind of stuff. So don't let your animals chew on them. Obviously, it wouldn't be good for the plants either, um, but you don't want to, you know, risk kids or animals chewing and choking on them. 
and um, they're not poisonous though so if that is an issue or a concern um, there you have it I just really want to recommend growing this plant if you are somebody who's new to Haworthias or succulents in particular this is such an easy one to grow your biggest issue is just to um, caution yourself from overwatering. but just look at the light how the light shines through those beautiful leaf tips the way that they clump out it's just something really calm, something wonderful and pleasing about this plant. Um, of course, you know I love Haworthias anyway, but I think this would be a great one for someone who is a little bit new maybe, and someone who just wants something beautiful in your home. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you all have a great week.